you doing? Welcome, welcome to this live stream. Let's give everybody a couple minutes to start jumping in. What's up, Amnesia? Hope Great to see you. I hope you're having a great day. We got Chris Peterson jumping on in. If you guys are here live right now, drop a comment. Let me know where you are coming in from. And let me know, have you started selling on Amazon yet? Are you selling books? What are you selling? Where are you from? I would love to know in the comments right now. We got uh, we got VAG in the house. Nice to see you. Hey, great to have you in here. What's up, Dun Skies? Welcome, everybody. Great to have you here. I see a bunch of people joining on in. I've got a really great video for you guys today. Um, I've got some really awesome tips that I want to share with you that's going to help you to start making more money sourcing books from thrift stores, okay? So who here would like to start making more money from thrift stores, find more books? The books have a higher ROI, they have a higher profit, they turn faster, and you're able to find more books, source more inventory in less time. Drop a one down in the comments if that sounds something, sounds like something that would be exciting for you. Because I know for me, when I go out thrifting or I hit garage sales or flea markets or I'm sourcing online, it's all about maximizing profit. I want to find as much inventory as possible in the least amount of time. Because I don't want to be out here thrifting and sourcing and trying to find inventory for my business all day long. I want to find my items quick. Hey, what's going on, girl? Great to see you here. We got Pink Trap Kid in the house. We got Jeremy. What's going on, Chris? Everybody's dropping a bunch of ones. Fantastic. So I am live streaming right now on Instagram. So Instagram, what's going on? We also got YouTube in the house right now. So giving you guys some love and let's get right into this training. Okay. So Let's talk about seven tips that are going to help you to find more books, more inventory, higher profit at thrift stores in less time. Because when you're growing an Amazon business and you want to make more money, it's all about building your inventory. There's no way around it. If you want to make more money selling on Amazon, you've got to build your inventory. You've got to find more inventory. Well, how do you do that? Thrift stores is one of the best ways to do that. And let me share with you uh, seven tips. Now, I do want to say right now, for the folks who are watching on Instagram, all you've got to do is DM me the word books, and I'll send you over my free five-day book selling workshop. For the folks on YouTube, just check the link down below in the description. But if you want to get over five hours of free content, it's my free course, walks through the whole entire process of how to find books, source books, list books, ship books, all the different methods, just DM me or respond right here on this live books and I will hook you up with that. So tip number one, you have to experiment going to different thrift stores. Okay. This is probably one of the number one tips I could share with everybody. If you're going to go to thrift stores looking for books, you've got to understand that not all thrift stores are created equally. They're not. Some thrift stores are going to get a lot more donations. Certain thrift stores are going to sell their books online. Yeah, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but there's some Goodwills out there and some thrift stores, when they get all the books, they're actually scanning them in the back room and they're taking all the good books and they're selling them for themselves, okay? So how do you know if a thrift store is doing this? You go to the thrift store two, three, four, five, six times and you realize, I never find anything good here. Or maybe I'm just getting the scraps. That's a sign that the thrift stores are probably scanning them or, and I'll talk more about this, this could be a sign that you're getting beat by other competitors, but you've got to experiment going to different thrift stores, okay? So I live here in Connecticut. I've got a couple really good thrift stores in my area, but sometimes I've got to travel out 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Sometimes I take little trips an hour or two out to try to figure out where are the best thrift stores? Where are the, you know, where are the honey holes, right? I call them honey holes. So you've got to experiment going to different thrift stores to figure out which ones are best. Some thrift stores, they're going to have really great books. They're going to have a ton of donations. They're going to have a bunch of inventory coming in and maybe they don't have a lot of competitors. Maybe they sell their books online. Maybe other times they, maybe they don't sell their books online. Maybe some thrift stores have a lot of competition that know about that thrift store. Maybe some don't. So you've got to frequent your thrift stores regularly, try different thrift stores and try to figure out which ones are best for you. Tip number two, when you go to a thrift store, a lot of people have it backwards. A lot of people think when I go to a thrift store, I want to find 
the inventory that's like 50% off or 75% off because a lot of thrift, thrift stores, what they'll do is after a certain period of time, they'll start to cut down the prices, okay? And they will start to reduce the price on some of these books. While there are some opportunities to find profitable books you could sell on Amazon that have been sitting for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, trust me, they're out there. The real money is in the new inventory. So how do you know if inventory is new at the thrift store or if it's been sitting for a while? Now, depending on where you live, at least where I live, the inventory has a sticker on it and it's a color coordinate system. So it might be red, blue, green, yellow, orange, there might be four, five, six different colors. And what they're essentially doing is skewing their inventory so they know how old it is. And every week or so, depending on what thrift store you're at, um, they'll start to cut prices or they'll start to run like little promotions or sometimes they won't do anything. Like Savers doesn't do anything. They just skew their stuff. And I think they might cycle it through different thrift stores and stuff. So pay very close attention to the color that's the newest color, okay? So look for the new inventory. This includes inventory that is coming out on the carts, coming out on the blue little, you know, shelving things that Goodwill will wheel out with all the new inventory. You want to attack those freaking carts, okay? Now, depending on where you live, they may or may not allow you to actually attack those carts because sometimes they have rules that say, uh, that state, you can't touch the inventory until it hits the floor. Oh, that's interesting. We've got... Big shout out to the used book guy on YouTube. What's going on, Mike? Mike says 75% of my thrift stores now scan everything before it hits the floor. And this is a very valuable lesson for everybody watching right now. Do not live and die based on the thrift stores. If your whole business is based upon sourcing from thrift stores, which you could still absolutely make a full-time income, I think. I don't source fully from the thrift store, but I'm sure people are doing it. If you're only sourcing from thrift stores, you're putting yourself in a terrible position because you can't control the competition. You can't control how much inventory is coming in. Like you don't have any control over that stuff. So yeah, it's very interesting. Amanda says, I wish I could get backroom access. They deny me every time. So big shout out to Amanda. Great to have you here. Amanda, you know, cool story about Amanda. I'm actually reading her comment on YouTube right now. If you guys aren't following me on YouTube, rake and profit or vice versa on Instagram, go follow me over there. But uh, Amanda, I mean, I'm, I remember when I started, you know, first talking to her eight, nine months ago, she was doing 20, $30 a month in sales. And now she's doing four or five. I think she's on pace to do 6,000 a month. So everybody drop a heart emoji for Amanda in the comments for doing big things. Very cool. So that's a big thing. Look for new inventory. All right. Look for the colors. Look for the carts coming out. It's extremely important. All right. And again, for the folks who are tuning in on Instagram, just DM me the words book or books, and you'll get my free five-day book selling workshop if you just want to cut to the chase and just learn how to source list ship 100% free. All right. Tip number three, build friendships with the workers. Now, there's a lot of benefits to building friendships with the thrift store you know, staff and the thrift store uh, employees. Oh, we got a bunch of people saying LFG. Let's freaking go, Amanda. Everyone's showing love to Amanda. Awesome. But build relationships with the workers at the thrift stores. Okay. Now, the reason you're going to want to do this is number one, if you're frequenting, uh, if you're frequent, frequently, I can't even talk this morning. Let me take a drink of coffee. All right. If you're frequently going to thrift stores, there's nothing worse than going to a thrift store and like you don't talk to the workers and it's awkward and it's uncomfortable and, and you're like taking books off their cart and there's just this weird vibe going on. Is it just me or is everybody, anyone else deal with this? Like you're at a thrift store and maybe you, you didn't build a relationship with this person or they're just really awkward and you're like, this is just weird. If you build friendships with the workers there, then it's certainly a better experience. It's a lot more fun. You could talk to them. Um, a lot of times, like I don't go to thrift stores as much as I used to because I do mostly online arbitrage now. Um, but I still go to thrift stores. My mom, she still does thrift stores full time. She's 69. I think 69 now. She's going to kill me for putting her age out there. But she's doing around three to 5,000 a month still. She's been doing that for like eight, eight years. <laughs> she just sticks to that, you know, that three to $5,000 a month mark. She's making my videos become evergreen. Um, 
but she literally goes to the thrift stores. She's friends with them. She'll bring donuts. She'll bring uh, like sometimes chocolates um, for the workers there. And she's friends with them. They'll bring out books for her. And, you know, she's not trying to, I'm sure she's trying to manipulate them a little bit, not in a bad way, but uh, you know, she's trying to make it a win-win, give them a good time. She gets a good time. It's a party, right? So uh, build friendships with the workers. They'll give you tips. They'll give you hints. They'll bring out books for you. Tip number four, okay? Scan books that don't have a barcode. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm looking for a book around me, but I don't have any around me. If the book doesn't have a barcode, scan that book, okay? Scan that book. The reason you want to scan the book um, is because there's still money to be made. Well, you're probably thinking, Steve, what the hell are you talking about? There's no barcode. How do I scan the book if there's no barcode? There's a couple different ways you could scan it. If you're using a third-party app such as uh, Scout IQ or Scoutly, there's a function that allows you to actually scan the ISBN number inside of the book. You could also type in the title or you could scan the cover of the book with the Amazon seller app because they have technology inside the Amazon seller app that lets you take a picture of the cover. It'll read the, the metadata and it'll bring up the correct listing. This is huge. Most resellers are lazy. I hate to say it. You know, don't hate me, right? Don't, don't come after me and say, hey, Steve's calling me lazy. I'm not calling you lazy because you're watching this, but let's just be real. 90% of resellers out there are some lazy son of a guns. They won't do anything above just the freaking bare minimum. If the book doesn't have a barcode, I'm not scanning it. Okay, fine. Don't scan it. Amanda's going to scan it. Okay, Mike's going to scan it. Mary Adams is going to scan it. All right? We're going to get Dono scanning that book, okay? And again, you could type it in. You could scan it. Whatever you want to do, look it up. Because a lot of those books can actually be worth really good money. OK, so to recap so far, tip number one, experiment, go into different thrift stores. You got to find the winners. Tip number two, always look for the new inventory at the thrift store. OK, yeah, there's opportunities. There's little scraps. You can make a couple bucks maybe on some of these books that resellers missed or passed up on. Maybe you get a home run now and then. But in general, the new inventory is really where you want to hang out. The new inventory coming out in the carts. OK, the newest colors. Scan books that don't have a barcode. Build relationships with the workers. And this is a big tip right here. Tip number five. Yeah, Romy's like, I'll definitely scan it. Romy ain't playing any games, all right? <laughs> Take note of when the new inventory is coming out. So what do I mean by this? If you frequent the thrift stores often enough, you're going to learn what days are the best, okay? You're going to learn, oh, Goodwill brings out the best books, excuse me, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. Um, oh, savers, they bring out their books before noon or, oh, wow, this, you know, this mom and pop thrift store, for some reason, every Friday they get donations and they bring out the stuff. How do you know when the good stuff is going to come out? You got to go. You got to not be lazy. You got to work your butt off. You got to go on a regular basis. But I tell you right now, the reason you want to go to thrift stores, if you're new, is they're cheap. The books are cheap. Um, you know, the stuff like, like books in general, are easy to list, they're easy to ship and the margins are through the roof. Like it is very competitive. And, you know, I had a question the other day from a, a girl who messaged me and she was like, Steve, how many books can I expect to find at a thrift store when I go thrifting? And my answer was the most pretty much useless, uh, response. I said, you can find anywhere from zero to 50 books. And it's true. Who here agrees? You ever, you ever been to a thrift store and you found 50 books? But you ever been to a thrift store and you found zero? Yep. Happens all the time. Okay. It depends on competition. Depends on a lot of factors. Okay. And Pat Patrice on uh, YouTube just dropped a really great comment. I tried next door app and have some great books to sell. Get yourself the next door app. Okay. Just Google next door app, go on the play store, get the next door app. It's free. And it's essentially a way for you to post wanted ads locally. One of the best things you can do. And for the folks, Anyone here in Reselling Freedom, drop a one if you're a member of Reselling Freedom. If you don't know what that is, you can check it out at Reselling Freedom. That's my membership site. Actually, Mike, the used book guy, is one of the coaches in there. Amanda's one of the coaches. Joji Jab, Joji Jabinport, Joji Davenport. He does ten to twenty thousand a month just selling books. He's one of the coaches in there. Check it out at resellingfreedom.com. The reason I share that is we have, I think, thirteen different scripts copy and paste templates that you can use to find all different types of items using Nextdoor, using Facebook Marketplace. So for any of the members in there, definitely check that out. 
Oh, and big shout out to Jimmy Smith. What's going on, man? I'm excited to connect with Jimmy soon. He's got a really fantastic software that helps folks to be able to replenish their inventory. And I'm super pumped up to definitely connect with, uh, to connect with uh, Jimmy to talk about his software. So great to have you here. I see you jumping in on Instagram. Very cool. So tip number five, take note of when the inventory is coming out. Get yourself a little notepad, put it in your car. If you hit a home run at the thrift store, write down what date, what time, when did the stuff come out? Take note of when the good inventory is coming, what days, what times, and then hit it over and over and over again. Hey, much love, Jimmy. Appreciate you, brother. So take note of that. That's what my mom did when she started thrifting. She had a little tiny little notepad in her car. And every time she went to a thrift store, she'd mark down how did she do? How many did she buy? It's something in my eye. Um, how, how much inventory or how much potential profit did she make? And she did that for a while. And then over time, she figured out, you know, what thrift stores were best, what opportunities were best. Sanjay says how to start this one because in this Q4, I will plan FBA. Now's the time to start. I hate to say this, Sanjay. You don't want to start in Q4. You want to start now because in Q4, there's a bunch of limitations. If you're a new seller, you could have your inventory held down. So you got to build up your sales velocity. You've got to get started now. And if you get started in Q4, I don't know what's in my eye. If you get started in Q4 in like October, November, December, you're already too late because it takes a couple months to get started. So start now. Okay. Go to my free five day book selling workshop links down below rakeandprofit.com slash workshop. Or if you're on Instagram, just DM me the word books. And I've got an automation set up to my, thanks to my main man, Lilit, who's in the comments. And if you type in books, it should automatically send you my free five day workshop. So for folks who are on YouTube, go to my Instagram at rake and profit, DM me books or comment on any of my videos. It should work. Um, if, if, uh, if it, you know, if it's working properly, <laughs> so awesome. Oh, TJ, we got TJ in the house. He's one of the coaches as well inside of reselling freedom. Great to see you here, TJ. Oh, I love TJ. What's going on, man. And Lisa, big shout out to Lisa trying to hit thrift stores on a regular basis. Once you learn their schedule, it is important. Absolutely. Thanks so much, TJ, for dropping in. Tip number six, make sure to use a third-party scanning app such as Scout IQ or Scoutly. So you could 100% scan uh, books with Amazon Seller App, which is a free app that comes with Amazon when you sign up for an account. Um, the thing is, you want to use a third-party app because you could set up what are known as custom triggers. Think of it as like AI. Think of it as like uh, automations that happen without you. So excuse me. So when you scan a book with Scout IQ or Scoutly, and again, for anyone who gets the free five-day workshop, I share all about this. I give you all the links and everything. So don't freak out if you're like, where do I find the links? Just go through the workshop. Um, but you can essentially set up a rule that essentially the app will tell you to ding and give you a little green light if you should buy it or beep, beep and show a red light if you shouldn't buy it. So you want to get these third-party apps because it makes scanning so much faster. Okay. So you want to definitely do that. So you can scan a lot quicker and you can find more inventory. So definitely check out Scout IQ and check out Scoutly as well. And tip number seven is to be consistent. Make sure you're going out consistently. Okay. Go to the thrift stores consistently, show up consistently, look for inventory consistently. You've got to ship books in consistently. You have to make sure you're at this consistently because sometimes you're going to hit home runs at the thrift stores. Other times you're going to fail. Sometimes you're going to make a ton of money and you're going to find 40, 50, 60 books. Other times you're going to find nothing. It's hit or miss. Some thrift stores are going to be scams and they're going to be charging five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bucks for a book. Others are going to be charging a dollar. Some thrift stores are going to be scanning books. Others are going to have really great opportunities for you. So you definitely want to make sure to get yourself a third party app, be consistent, go to these thrift stores consistently, take note of when the good inventory is coming out, scan books that don't have a barcode, build friendships with the workers, look for new inventory that's coming out on the carts or that's skewed with a specific color that is a newer color, experiment going to new thrift stores. And like I said, guys, it's just a journey. So 
that's all I've got for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away and I'll answer a couple of questions right now for everybody. Appreciate you all hanging out. Hey, Christopher, thanks so much. Simple Finds, appreciate you for jumping on in. Awesome, awesome, very good. Amanda says, I'm motivated to hit the thrift store today. I love thrifting. Excellent. Yeah, start going to the thrift store. Drop a one in the comments if you guys are going to go out to the thrift store today. I want to know who's going to go out to the thrift store. Who's going to go through my free five-day book selling workshop or who's already gone through it and is, you know, hitting the ground running? I want to know. Tish, uh, Sheba, great question. Where are other places to go besides thrift stores? So thrift stores are like, I call thrift stores, it's like a, it's like a gateway drug <laughs> onto bigger and better things without all the nasty side effects, right? You start with thrift stores, you move on to library sales, you go to garage sales, you start hitting up auctions and flea markets. Maybe you build some relationships with some thrift stores or libraries and get some backroom access. Maybe you start posting some wanted ads on Facebook Marketplace and Nextdoor. Then what I would recommend is starting to do some eBay to Amazon flips or some Amazon to Amazon flips because that's what I do nowadays. If you're wondering, does this guy who did $470,000 in the last 12 months with Amazon and that's what I've done, is he going to thrift stores and doing this? No. So it is a bit misleading. I don't find all my inventory from thrift stores. The reason I share it and to be fully transparent because that's the easiest way for most folks to start. Most folks, you know, don't have twenty to thirty thousand dollars a month to spend on inventory. Most folks maybe just have a couple hundred dollars and they're just getting started. They're experimenting. So thrift stores is great. Then library sales, garage sales, auctions, flea markets, next door, Facebook Marketplace. And as you start to build up your uh, cash reserves, then you want to move on to doing some Amazon to Amazon flips, some eBay to Amazon flips. And then slowly growing from there, you can even start to move into some wholesale opportunities, so on and so forth. TJ says, don't be afraid to ask the thrift store workers about how they rotate books and bring new books out. Fantastic tip. Really great tip. Have conversations. Build relationships with the folks at thrift stores. Hey, when do you bring out new inventory? Is there a specific day that you, that you guys and gals typically bring out new inventory? Vivo's, uh, Chris says, uh, how do I... How do I get thrift? How do I start thrifting in the UK? I don't know. I live in the United States, but there are people who do it. I just, I don't know. Cause I don't, I don't live in the UK. So unfortunately I, I don't have a lot of advice for the international folks thrifting. Uh, Patrice says the Natamu is a game changer. Yeah. If you go to rakeandprofit.com slash scanner, that'll redirect you to the Natamu scanner that, that I personally use. It is an affiliate link. You don't have to go through it, but that's the easiest way for me to <laughs> get people over to that. What's up, Sherry? How you doing? Bob says, see you in three hours. Yeah, for the folks who are in Reselling Freedom, um, we actually are going to be doing week number two of the uh, CD and DVD flipping boot camp. So for any of the folks in Reselling Freedom over at resellingfreedom.com, I'll be actually doing a really cool beginner class on sourcing CDs and DVDs um, from eBay.com. So I have different softwares. I've, have a, I've had a whole, I, I built a whole entire method. My business is changed so much over the last 18 months, but I have an entire method of sourcing from eBay, books, board games, CDs, DVDs, all different types of items. They show up to my house. I ship them to Amazon and bada bing, bada boom, the profits are coming soon. So for folks in Reselling Freedom, that's what Bob is talking about. See you in three hours. Yep. I'll see you over there. Get ready. It's going to be a lot of fun. What's the best type of books, Amanda says? So that's a great question. We should be asking Amanda because she's the book selling expert now. But I would say in general, you know, you want to go after nonfiction books, anything that's weird, anything that's obscure, anything that's very niched down, you know, whether it's horseback riding or a, a book on accounting or, you know, becoming a veterinarian, anything that's odd, uh, box sets, textbooks, really. I love flipping textbooks, any textbooks, if they're newer and current. Uh, for a new seller, I'd really stick to under a million rank if you're new. And I would try to go after books that are under a million rank and maybe over a 20 E score if you're brand new and don't know what you're doing. General rule of thumb for advanced sellers, that's not the best advice because you can make a ton of money with books over a million rank and under a 20 E score. But that's just a general rule of thumb. Lovett says, I love to sell Lego and toys. I sell so many Lego and toys that I buy from eBay to Amazon. Some of my favorite 
definitely some of my favorite items to flip. Yeah, Patrice says textbooks, especially when school coming back. Yep, August, September, and then January, those times, you can absolutely crush it. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I want to say thank you so much for watching. For anybody who wants to learn more about selling on Amazon, I've got two options for you. The free option, get my free five-day book selling workshop. If you're on Instagram, just DM me the word books or book. I'll send that right over to you. For the folks on YouTube, check the link down below. You can check out my free five-day workshop as well at rakeandprofit.com uh, forward slash workshop. Or for the folks who are really serious and you want to get lifetime access to the book selling workshop. You want to get, you know, two to three to four live coaching calls every week with me and my coaching team. If you want to get over 150 hours of coaching calls just from 2023, all of our copy and paste templates. If you really want to be able to just cut through all the fat and just get exactly what you need to get results, definitely consider checking out resellingfreedom.com. That's our membership site. And with that being said, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much, Amanda, Patrice, TJ, Joe, Bob. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, everybody. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.